Oh my gosh, this is heavy. Okay, yeah, so is. where did you first meet your groom to be? Michael and I met hanging around in Morgantown. <laughs> I met Megan in Morgantown, and we met at a Buffalo Wild Wings, <laughs> of all places, uh, for dinner. Michael is the most genuine, sincere person you will ever meet in your life. And he just loves with all of his heart. And he, like I said, he is the most genuine, sincere, most wonderful person, and he makes me a better person. Honestly. Honestly, it sounds so cliche, but it's true. Uh, well, she was beautiful. Uh, she's definitely attractive. But uh, what film made me fall for her was uh, her heart and the way she treated me and the way she took care of me. Michael, I love you. You're going to do just fine. Please make sure I don't fall and that I don't catch us both on fire. I <laughs> love you. I love you, and I promise I won't step on your dress. <laughs> Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Okay. They need me yes. for a minute. Okay. Here, can you hold that for me, please? Hold the thing next to you? Okay. I'll be here. Excuse me. I'm running over my dress. Yeah. Okay. There we go. We're good. Do you need more? Are you going to use this dirt? This, huh? No, I'm showing you the back of it. You like I love it? it? I love it. Okay, no more. I'm gonna wipe that off you one more time. <laughs> you guys look at me. Put your arm out of my Good deal. Oh, my dress.
We, their family and friends, come together to celebrate this day and to pray with them and for them that God will protect you and grow in his love and mercy always. So let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, be attentive to our prayers, and in your kindness, pour out your grace upon your servants, Megan and Michael, that coming together today before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for each other. We pray this to our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Your seats. Please be seated for our scripture readings.
appreciate one another. And the readings and everything that shows God's day celebration brings that to reality. The Old Testament book of Tobit says that Tobiah and Sarah, the night of their wedding, got together and said, God, thank you for giving me this partner, for giving me this person to grow with me. And I ask you to protect us that we can have a long and happy life together. And isn't that a great prayer to begin your very life? And the second reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians says, Love is a gift to be cherished and cared for. And let's face it, you know that already. For who would have thought that a girl from Greenville and Mercer County and a guy from, from McKean and Erie County would somehow fall together in love in West Virginia? <laughs> and then Megan said the best thing that happened in her life was to go to West Virginia. Not many people say that. <laughs> but truly, God brought you together to realize that this is the person that is going to fulfill me and make me better. And before we begin today, I ask you all this simple question. Why are you marrying this other person? And both of you, first looking like you got here in headlights, and then with a great smile said, this is the person I want, that completes me, that makes me better, that can listen to me, that can help me, that realizes everything that I need and is there for me. This is the person that I've been waiting forever to have, because they make me who I am. And maybe that, that's what marriage is about. So today I'm going to give you two words to think about. Commitment and communication. Today you're standing before God and said, this is the one, good, bad, and indifferent, that I want to spend the rest of my life with. That I want to make the best possible person that he or she can be. Remember that all of us. And secondly, talk, laugh, love. Share everything of your good and bad with each other so that you will grow every single day to learn more and more about the mind. So then, I just have one simple question to ask you. Are you ready to marry? Okay. I invite your wedding party to rise and go to places. Lord 
God, bless these rings which we now present in your name. Grant that Nathan and Michael will always wear them with a deep faith in each other. May they do your will and always live together in peace, goodwill, and love. Through Christ our Lord.
Please stand and pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Receiving your kindness, O Lord, the offerings we bring in gladness before you, and in your fatherly love, watch over these you have joined in the sacrament of marriage. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and ever give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Son of God, through Christ our Lord. For you we have made a new covenant in your people, so that you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so that in Christ you might make them partakers of your divine love and join heirs with him in heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving grace of grace, and the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. Now, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, and without end, we acclaim you.
have mercy on us all, we pray. The way the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
invite those who are becoming communion this morning to come forward to the center aisle and return your seats to the side. If you're not receiving, you receive it this time.
Holy Father, creator of the universe, maker of man and woman in your own likeness, source of blessings for all married life, we humbly pray to you for this bride man, who today is united with her husband Michael in this most holy bond of marriage. May your fullest blessings come upon her and her husband, so they may together rejoice in your gift of married life and love. May they be noted for their good and caring lives, and be parents filled with virtue and devotion. Lord, may they both praise you when they are happy, and turn to you in their sorrows. May they be glad that you help them in their work, and know that you are with them in their need. May they reach old age in the company of family and friends, and come at last to the joy of your kingdom. And may you bless and protect them always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is my great honor and privilege to present to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Michael May. Stop it. 
go with you? Yeah, stop fucking talking. Because <laughs> I wanted to tell her something. Okay, great. <laughs> Well, this one is oh, you it's did waxed it. down. You waxed it's waxed it. down, so and yeah, so that one should stay for a little while. It'll probably fall a little bit, but yeah, the wax should be settling oh, pretty quickly so it doesn't. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Okay. You good with that? Okay, I just want you to do What's that? I had wax. What? A face. You have a present for me. Oh. A bird. Okay. Yeah, a bird. Uh-huh, a bird. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay, I'll see you. Like to say anything so to the bride and groom? Funny story, special message. What happened? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Did they actually go anywhere, or did they? Oh, this is so much pressure. <laughs> I know. Right. Sit on the side um, of the road. Is there an interesting <laughs> story to this? Um, crap. This is what you do. Then. You got this. You got this. There's, there's like so. There's like only. Embarrassing Mike stories. Oh, though. tell like, an embarrassing Mike story. Like, like what, the Ego story? Yeah, tell them that. Alright, alright. Right, right, right. I was like, like seven years old, maybe? And Mike was? How old? 15, 16? Yeah, yeah probably like 16 or 17. And, uh,. There was a the, I, there was one more like blueberry ego waffle left in my freezer, and I ate it. And Mike came home from I'm assuming a very stressful day of high school, and he um, and he went he went to like go get the waffles, and he's like, what happened to the what, what happened to the egos? I was like, oh, I ate the last one. And he was just like, oh, you little bastard. And just like walked away. And I was like, Mike, no. I'm sorry. Where's my brother? I'm sorry. Um, that is a funny story. And this also provides uh, funny. And remember the one time when Mike had to like babysit us? He had to make BLTs, but it just turned into toast. <laughs> we just ate toast. <laughs> He cooks much better now. Yeah, I'll make him cook like, for you. Me and Amanda are like six, just oh, sitting there like, I don't know how to get back. Like, Mike, we make a CLT! <laughs> Tone not a pleasure. Do you have any special message for the bride and groom? Uh, okay. <laughs> Funny story, tips for the future. Uh, how many tips? I, well, I have some stories. <laughs> 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 oh, there's more stories. That's a good one about Mike. You need to go to the time when he told me that he blew his underwear out of the car. Yeah, do that one. Do that one. Okay. <laughs> this one time, me and Sammy were cleaning our room, and Mike. This was when it was like me and Sammy shared a room, and Mike was in a was in the far room, and Stephen was in the middle. And Mike walks into the bathroom, and it was like the morning, so he was like getting ready. Yes, please. In a minute. Wait, I'm sure that. Tell the story. And um, and we. What? <laughs> no, okay, sorry. Anyways, and so we heard this loud, like, I don't even know how to, like, describe the sound. It sounded like an explosion. And and then Mike came in with his pair of underwear. And they're all, like, torn apart. And he's like, I just farted, and my underwear blew up. They were, like, it was, like, tattered underwear. Like, what did you do? That's some fart. <laughs> no one looks happy. Why is no one smiling? Why is no one making silly faces? Well, there's an awesome sky behind you. Someone do something. Do something crazy. Okay, fine. I'll go. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to do it. There's a puppy in the river. <laughs> <laughs>
Look at her. Someone should show off their dance moves to this kind of music. Alright, walk up to your husband. Come on, get in there. Feel free to lay one on him. Shoulder.
<laughs> Just on one drink. gentlemen, if I could please have your attention, the bridal party has arrived, and it is now time for us to introduce the bridal party to you. If you would draw all your eyes towards this door right here, they're going to be coming in from there. First, I would like to introduce to you the parents of the bride, Mr. and Mrs. Greg and Kate Landfree. Next, we have the bride's grandparents, Norb and Mary Meckenbeyer. <laughs> they like to make a grand entrance. They're at their table, I believe. That's what it is. They're waving over there. All right. Next up, we're going to introduce you to the groom's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Jerry and Beth Laughlin. Next up, the groom's father, Dr. Michael Nealon, being, uh, along with his grandmother, Mary Nealon. <laughs> Next up, being escorted by Dan Laughlin, this is the groom's other grandmother, Shirley Laughlin. And now we're going to introduce the bridal party to you. I'd like to start off first. It's Amanda Laughlin being escorted by Alan Meyer. <laughs> Up next, I'd like to introduce to you the flower girls and the ring bearers, Grace and Emily Meckenbeyer and Greg and Nick Meckenbeyer. <laughs> Up next, part of the bridal party, Sammy Laughlin being escorted by Stephen Nealon. escorted by Charlie Scholl. <laughs> Up next is the maid of honor, Aaron Landfried, being escorted by the best man, David Hood. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you would please stand as we introduce to you the guests of honor tonight, the new Mr. and Mrs. Michael and Megan Nealon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you keep your eyes on the dance floor, the bride and groom are going to have their first dance as husband and wife. 
They've chosen a beautiful song by Adele called Make You Feel My Love.
Once again, let's give them a nice hand there for coming on the table. Not only a cat, but a dog. 
and to take care of himself enough to take care of the allergies that he once had to those animals. She's helped Mike experience the finer things and expand his palate. She's pushed him to have new experiences, and she's supported him, and she's loved him. In return, Mike has helped her see the humor in life. <laughs> to smile more, to unwind, sorry, I'm probably gonna cry. <laughs> um, to enjoy the lives they're living and the future they're building together. Um, and the ways that you'll help each other to become better people will grow every day. And you now have a lifetime to grow with, push, enjoy, and support each other as you have for the past two years. Now, figuring out your role in a couple is difficult, but figuring out your role in a new family, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> is even more challenging, I think. Um, so looking back into history, while my soul had always been our sweeter older brother, being five years older than me, he was going through college when the rest of us were still in grade school. He went through graduate school that he took very seriously while earning his master's. And then he lived in Iraq for three years. He moved to West Virginia where he had mysterious jobs and I don't even know what they were. <laughs> and this, these transaction of events left, left Mike separated in proximity from the rest of the family. We hardly ever got to see him, although we missed him dearly. But in 2012, we saw a change. He visited Pittsburgh to spend weekends with me and Charlie. He went to high school productions to support my sisters. He visited my dad in the Shenandoah Mountains, always with Megan by his side, because she instantly fit into the family. Within a few meetings, she was joking around with me and my sisters, talking oil and gas like old colleagues with Charlie, keeping up with Stephen on his sarcastic comebacks, which anybody who knows Stephen knows that that's a feat. <laughs> my parents loved her, and most importantly, we could see that Mike adored everything about her. He wanted to show her off, rightfully so, and we wanted both of them around all of the time. And that's what we got. We've seen Mike more in the past years than several previous years combined. And to me, Megan and Mike have become not only a brother and sister-in-law, but very good friends. Mike's already close relationships with everyone in our family have been further strengthened by Megan, which is truly telling of her love for him. So Mike, thank you for our new sister. And Megan, thank you for giving us our brother back. So thank you, Megan. Who uh, 
roots for teams that are perennial losers. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> some, 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 some things I've learned uh, have been always uh, high cell phones, uh, TV remotes, things that weigh, you know, over a couple pounds because you'll get them thrown somewhere. <laughs> Hopefully not at you. <laughs> but, um, uh, a lot of times, they'll always look forward to the off season um, after the you know, first two weeks of the year when, when they think they're going to win the Super Bowl. So, um, uh, usually after, you know, after the season's over, I found that uh, she, uh, disowns the team that she's rooted so hardly for, so, um, before coming back to it, so. Um, so, I guess in closing, I just, I'm really, really happy that you guys found each other, and I'm really happy that you, you know, included us and our family on this really special day. So, you can, just raise your glasses, and the mic. <laughs> Uh, right now we're going to do the blessing for the dinner of Re Reverend David McKay, the bride's uncle. institution which Christ further sanctified by using as the perfect example, the best example of the relationship that exists between a loving God and his children. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you promised to be that loving bridegroom, the one who has given himself for his beloved church, the bride of Christ. And we do pray, O oh Lord, your richest blessing now as Michael and Megan begin married life together. We recognize, O oh Lord, that none of us know the future. Our times are in your hands. And so we pray that they would have many times of joy and that their times of sorrow would be few. But if there are to be times of trial and times of sorrow, that they would look to you and your comfort and your grace. But we thank you, O oh Lord, for the opportunity that we have as family and friends to join together on this special day as they begin married life together. We pray your blessing upon this celebration and upon the beginning of this marriage, we ask these things in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you would remain in your seats, the dinner is going to be served by the staff of the Sheridan very soon.
look at you, I've turned around and you've almost grown. Sometimes when I sleep, I whisper, I love you when you're low.
a nice round of applause for Mom. Well, the time of the night where we're going to have a little bit of fun, we're going to get the uh, bouquet of flowers for our lovely bride, which is sitting up here on my table. And we'll need the bride out here. She's going to throw these flowers. We're in need of you, Megan. <laughs> we need you. It's time for the flowers. <laughs> what you're gonna do is, now that we've got you the flowers, we'll, where would you like her to stand so we can get the best shot here? You're here. I'm here. All right. Let's get all the single ladies. Single meaning you're not married. All the single ladies get out on the dance floor. And Megan, I'm not afraid to name names. So if you see anybody who's not coming out, it's obviously all of them. Hey Megan, I'm not afraid to name names. If you see them, they're still sitting. You let me know, I'll name them. Let's get a funny single lady, single meeting you're not married, or meeting you aren't married and wish you weren't. No, I'm kidding. We're going to get as many ladies out there as we possibly can. So Megan, do you see anybody else out there that's not coming out yet? The ladies who are out there, if you see anybody in the audience that isn't coming out, let me know. I'll pay them. This one right here? That's all right. You're only holding up the reception. Tanya at table 19 is not up here yet. Tanya at table 19. I like my... He never gave me the table number, so I knew where to look. Any other single ladies that you see that aren't coming up yet? Has Tanya from table 19 come up yet? <laughs> okay, so I'm just pointing it over here, too. <laughs> All right, what do you... I think we're doing pretty good here with them out of girls. You notice how they keep backing up for them? <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. On the count of three, I want you to throw the flowers back. Everybody help me count along here. Here we go. One, two, three. Make sure you're ready. We're probably going to need you a little bit. Event, you have to do with your teeth. No, no, you, 
you, you don't have to do with your teeth, but you do have to remember it's a family event. And this is a three minute song, so take your time. <laughs> That's not the garter. You still have two and a half minutes, Mike. That, that, that was too fast. All right. <laughs> Let's get our bride safely off the floor before we call any single guys up.
25? 30 years or less. Leave the floor. Would you look at this? <laughs> Usually by now it's pretty clear. This is a really impressive crowd. What were we up to now? 35 years? 35 or less? Leave the floor. How about 40 years or less? Forty-five or less. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have our winners on the floor right now. How many years? Sixty-seven years. Now we do have to ask you a question here. We have to ask you a question. Do you have any words of advice for the bride and groom on how they can be together for 67 years as well? Don't fight with her. You heard it, Mike, don't fight with her. Just say yes, dear, is that right? That's your granddaughter? So don't fight with her or you'll have to deal with grandpa. Once again, give it up 67 years. That is just amazing.
Love you guys. Best wishes. Megan and Mike, congratulations. You guys are a beautiful couple, and I look forward to seeing your beautiful children. Hey, congratulations, guys. It was a wonderful day. You had a beautiful wedding. And the bus ride, fun. Love you guys. Bye. Good luck, Megan and Michael. I hope you have a great marriage. Best of luck. Hey, Mike and Megan. Good luck. Have a great marriage. Mike and Megan, thank you for having us. Congratulations, Michael and Megan. Hope you have years of happiness and health ahead of you. This has been a beautiful night. Hey, best wishes to you. I hope you have a long and long, very long and happy life. Love you guys. Hey, Mike and Megan, congratulations. Yeah, we're having a great time, and uh, we're glad we got to see you guys again. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to come and visit you guys some more. And uh, <laughs> Check in at 1, 5, and 10. All right, have a good one. Congratulations. You guys are an amazing couple, and... We're so, so excited for you and love you to death. And life is just going to get better. That's all. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. We love you a lot. Congratulations. Congrats. It was wonderful. We're happy to be here. And you're going to be the happiest married couple that I know. Wonderful party to celebrate a wonderful couple. This is Grandpa speaking. Enjoying your party. Here's Grandma. I'm grandma too. Yeah, enjoy your day. And many, many, many more of them. Thank you. Congratulations and best wishes to Megan and Michael. Years of happiness and many, many babies. We love you and your family. Thank you for letting us celebrate your special day. Yay! Hi, Megan. Hi, Mike. Congratulations and best wishes on your marriage. If I could do it for 38 years, I'm sure you can. You love each other very much, and I'm proud of both of you. So have a good life, and I'll see you soon. Bye. You have a great core. Keep on going, and the best to you forever. Best wishes and much happiness, Mike and Megan. Congratulations, you guys. Love you. Best wishes and much happiness. Hi, Mike and Megan. I'm so happy for you. I, <laughs> um, I can't believe that you're actually married now. Um, this is absolutely amazing, and I'm so glad I have a sister like you now. Ditto. <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike and Megan, can you hear me? Listen, I love you guys. Michael, I cannot believe from my little nephew on Top Gun, the little spiky ass hair, and now here you are and you're married. Unbelievable. Megan, you are a great woman. You're a great girl. I hope you bring a lot of joy to my nephew. Uh, Michael, I love you dearly. My advice to you guys for a great marriage is total communication. Always talk and remember that you two love each other. And God bless, I love you guys the most. Mike and Megan, we just want to tell you that we love you. We wish you the best of luck. And a uh, long and fruitful life. And uh, your mother wants grandchildren. Have fun. My turn. Yes? We love you. We're proud of you. We wish you a world of happiness. And yes. Bye, friends. Bye. Love you. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Neil in here. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for showing up to our big day. Uh, we love everybody. And we're able to feel everybody's love how many people showed up for us mm -hmm. <laughs> on a big day. Thank you everybody for coming. Mike and I are so incredibly lucky to have such warm, loving people and such great influences in our lives. Thank you. Thank you. We love you all.